As you may or may not know, St. Therese of Lisieux lived from 1873 to 1897. She came from a small town in France. She entered the cloistered convent, very austere convent, full of neurotic nuns, by the way. Um, died of TB at the age of 24 after a long agony. No pain medication was allowed in the convent in those days. Gangrened intestines. Died clutching the crucifix and, and saying, I love him, meaning Christ, of course. And um, I think one of the reasons Therese is so compelling is she's a woman, number one. Um, I think she exemplifies the appropriate way, the true way to bring women into their, the full flower of their place in the church. And that is not through anger, not through let's settle a score, but through doing exactly what Christ did, which was to lay down his life for his friends. Um, this is the basic gospel message. Love your enemy, forgive the murderer, love one another as I have loved you. And the way Christ loved us was with complete nonviolence. Um, we live in a culture that is characterized more and more saturated with violence. Lots of people within the church who advocate violence, um, as has always been the case. And Therese, rather than resist any of that and say, no, that's all wrong, um, she lived out her life in this very outwardly unremarkable way, but that inwardly she burned with love and she found a way to approach the Gospels that is not, um, not a new way, but I think the most authentic way but also her unique way. And one of the things this shows me is that we all, love is unique to each of us. And the way that we approach the Gospels, there are an infinite number of ways to, to live the Gospels out in our own life. And her whole life was this huge act of creativity that was, ver that was all inward, that was hidden from the world, that was anonymous, that did not proclaim itself. Um, I think in this culture where we're so focused on fame, how many followers do we have? How many hits are we getting? Of which I am a, a prime member. Um, all of that is so contrary to the gospels that, says, that say, regard the lilies of the field and Unless the seed falls to the ground and dies, it abideth alone, but when it dies, it bears much fruit. Um, and she lived out her life in a way that burned from the inside and from the outside consented to do without any recognition, any assurance that she would ever be the saint that she wanted to be, that this life of love lived at fever pitch would ever bear fruit, that anyone would know about it, that anyone would see it, that she would... Um, and I think the, the mark of the authentic Christian, it's not so much that you want to be recognized, it's that you want Christ to be. And, and he, of course, is not recognized. And your living out of the Gospels tends not to be recognized. And, um, and it's a deep sorrow. Christ himself said, Oh, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you as a mother hen gathers her chicks. And, and what he just knew, Oh, they're not going to come to the banquet table. They're not going to see. And, um, and Therese was in total solidarity with Christ. Um, I mean, this is, this is her life. She shows us the follower... The follower of Christ is not marked by success, is not marked by vanquishing, by winning, by having the most followers. It is marked, in a sense, the true, the best Christian dies. He, the best, very best Christian is killed um, by people, the people who will eventually kill you if you live in enough integrity. Just as they killed Christ, just as they killed Martin Luther King, just as they killed Gandhi, just as they killed Archbishop Romero. So that's, it's, a, it's a, such a paradoxical religion. Um, the, the, the one who's really good at it dies. 
And um, that is not, uh, has never been, and is never going to be, um, you, you can't, you can't, the cross is, is impervious to promotion in any kind of worldly sense. Um, <laughs> the cross does not, it, it's not something that an advertiser is going to get on board with. And I think if we were really sp telling, spreading the gospel, no advertiser would come within a zillion miles of us. I think that's that's probably a good sign if nobody wants to to join up with your message. But anyway, um, the point is, I think we tend to look at this this um, young girl who developed what's known as the little way was known as the little flower as this kind of meek, mild. Um, Oh, what does she have to teach us? And these, you know, we're we live in the real world. And um, one of the things that I've thought about a lot is that, in fact, we all live in a cloistered convent filled with neurotic nuns, or some variation of. We live in the convent of our um, terrible bondage of self, our own limitations, our compulsions, our neuroses, our fears, um, and then we live. We live with the quote neurotic nuns. The um, we live with the people that we love, that keep us alive, and that at the same time drive us crazy. And this, to me, is the excitement of religion. Religion is not something extra that you tack onto life. It is the lens through which we see, through which we um, interpret our experience, and our experience is of our daily lives, and it is really mostly with our human interactions. That is the cross for us. It's where we, our own wounds are revealed to us. It's where our own hardness of heart is revealed to us. And I think um, it's where we see our own incredibly warlike tendencies, no matter how much we profess to be for peace and for nonviolence. And I think this, um, Therese's genius was that she combined psychology with spirituality and really looked at the ways that we um, are psychologically violent to ourselves and to others by this kind of um, people pleasing on the one hand um, or a sort of over sensitivity, over touchiness on the other, which is a kind of form of manipulation. Um, so it was this deep examination of conscience ongoing of really of herself and how she related to other people and she saw that authentic love must take place in, in or the mark of authentic love is, is tr real interior freedom that Christ himself obviously had. Christ never on the one hand never ever was a doormat nor on the other end of the spectrum did he ever return violence for violence, never returned psychological violence for violence, never obviously was physically violent. And people, people, all the warmongers always say, oh, what about the, what about the throwing out of the money changers in the temple? And it's like, he never touched another human being. The operative point to me, number one, uh, nonviolence doesn't preclude righteous anger. It doesn't in any way preclude action. What it precludes is vengeance, an eye for an eye vengeance. It precludes punishing people. It precludes teaching people a lesson. Um, and the and in the in the temple, Christ did he threw some cash registers to the ground. Um, so I hardly see that as a uh, any kind of rationale for say, just say dropping an atomic bomb on 110,000 civilians and. Japan, but at any rate, the point is, I feel like we so need, um, Therese is such a model for our time in that she was um, just resolutely lived out this nonviolent love of the Gospels and um, based on the fact first that we are loved, that we can't do anything, we're not going to strive to we're not going to work up any kind of love for people who basically drive us crazy, but what we can maybe do if we're really graced and if we really are open to it is to receive this measureless love of God and then um, radiate that, mediate it to other people. Um, I mean, I could go on and on, but anyway, I took my own walk with Therese. I spent a year with her. 
um, reflecting upon her, reflecting upon my own <laughs> pathetic spiritual crises. No, I shouldn't say pathetic, but um, they were. They, I, I think authentic spiritual crises that we all go through. Midlife. What is? What am I going to be, leave behind here? Um, so anyway, I hope you too. The memoir is funny in some ways. It's dark. It's. I hope it's real. I think the spiritual path is, it costs. Um, it costs, and yet there's absolutely no other reason to live or to be alive. And um, I'm grateful. I'm grateful to have gotten sober and to have found Christ and his church and to have had Therese for a companion. So, um, I hope you, you too, get something out of her. Okay, thank you.